Hello, I am Marco Corbetta, VP of Technology, and we're going to talk about some new Planet Earth features today. First, Anis is going to give us an introduction about Gen 12 and what that means for planets. Then Will is going to talk about dynamic foliage, shaders, plants and seasons, and he's going to show us a river demo as well. Then Mark and Morgan are going to talk about Rasta, our new base building tool. So let's get started with Anis. Hi, my name is Anis and I'm Senior Engine Programmer here in Cloud Imperium Games. My main responsibility is the development of Star Citizen planetary technology with a focus on planetary elements rendering. While there is another talk dedicated to Gen 12, I wanted to touch a little bit on how it applies specifically to Planet Tech. It's our Rendering Abstraction Layer API. It aims to provide next generation features for our 3D engine by reducing some CPU latency and rendering common submission over it, which is a significant bottleneck for our game. Part of our recent efforts have been put to modernize our old school renderer to shape it in a conformant modern API rendering style to be suitable for the newest low overhead API, such as Vulkan. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about Gen 12 benefits for planetary rendering features. As I said, Gen 12 key aspect is performance. The way this is achieved is to make common submission easier for multi-core CPUs. All Gen's rendering APIs rely on a single thread in which you have the view of a single timeline where GPU commands are guaranteed to be executed in order. The driver does the rest and is responsible to handle memory and synchronization. Gen 12 can scale much better thanks to the ability to dispatch in parallel commands that are submitted from different execution units. The memory is directly handled by the renderer and synchronization primitives are used to make sure commands dispatched in the right order by considering cross-dependencies between resources. Since the rendering driver is thinner and more responsibility is given to game developers, this opens a new opportunity to forge a new renderer for specific needs a game like Star Citizen might have. Our planetary technology introduced a new set of engineering challenges so we need to be very creative due to the fact that, that most game industry standards techniques are not working very well for Star Citizen. Thanks to Gen 12 optimizations, we can push our planetary rendering computational budgets to perform more GPU operations. This translates to better visuals, more details and less compromises. As a member of the Planet Tech team, I will show you some improvements we've recently made for our planetary terrain rendering pipeline. We made two important terrain improvements. The first is at ground scale level, and the second is for large scale purpose. Both techniques use dynamic tessellation. Dynamic tessellation is a GPU feature, which allows to increase the triangle count on the fly before rasterization stage occurs. The new triangle are then manipulated to shape the terrain high frequency details and improve surface visuals. This new technique is replacing our parallax relief mapping, which is a per pixel technique. And instead of creating geometric details like tessellation does, it works by simulating details after the rasterization stage with a cheaper approach by tracing rays from camera to surface. The second improvement targets planet visuals at long distance. This technique is also tessellation driven and it aims to improve terrain-ocean intersection, where CPU geometric representation lacks for enough control points in the geometry. We've reached the conclusion. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of CitizenCon. Thanks, Anise. I'm Will Hayne, I work on the Planet Tech team. Over the past few months, I've been working on a number of improvements to our ecosystem spawning system, which is the system that spawns all of the objects on all of the planets. We've been doing this to give our artists more power and flexibility, as well as improved performance for everyone playing the game. The first thing that I did was a complete overhaul of how we spawn the objects. We used to spawn them on each terrain patch as that terrain patch was created, but this meant that we were limited in our control in that we could only spawn new objects when we were creating new terrain patches. The new system has an entirely separate grid division of the planet, and this means that we have a lot more control over the resolution of our objects when they're spawned, 
and how we spread it across multiple frames, which means that we get better performance in the client. This also means that we add, we're able to add a setting for the clients to control how far away each object preset was spawned. The next improvement we've started to look at is making the ecosystems react to their situation and surroundings more. For example, we can now introduce scaling biases for temperature and humidity so that certain objects when in higher humidity can be bigger or smaller and the same for temperature. A new system has been designed for animal and entity spawning using tokens, which means that we can specialize our object presets better for different planets. For example, we have something similar for rocks. That means if you put a rock on a snowy planet, it goes snowy. And if you put it on a sandy planet, it looks sandy. Now we can do something similar for animals. We can specify a small herbivore, for example, and in the snow, this might spawn some sort of Arctic rabbit. And in the jungle, this might spawn something completely different. We've also begun to experiment with a new foliage shader that takes into account the health of the plant based on its surroundings again and the current season of the planet, though what you're seeing on the screen is far from final. In the same vein as that, we've been working towards having more dynamically placed biomes around natural areas. We've created dressing object presets that are automatically placed around coasts and of course my favourite thing to work on, rivers. In the most recent couple months, I've been doing more work on the rivers to prepare them to be closer to what we would consider shippable so that we can get them out to the players. This has included finer control of both the shape of our rivers as they flow from springs to larger rivers, but also the objects that spawn around our rivers so we have control over what spawns in the water, what is spawning on the banks of the river, and what is spawning further away and blending it into the biome that it flows through. The other thing that we've added as well is a wet edge around rocks, both in the sea and in rivers, which reflects the fact that they were probably wet from the river, and so they look a lot more shiny. We've also been working on introducing basins to the river system so that we can have more natural pauses in our river systems and other bodies of water than just the oceans. Another major change was to stop using the planet's ocean mesh and just displacing it up to the river and instead building specific river mesh sections around the river. This means that we can have far more control over the shape of the water and we can use our own specific river material and shader, meaning that we can specify colours, flow and other properties of the river water separately to the ocean of that planet. Rivers aren't done yet, but they're closer to being used in production than ever before. The next steps include a planet populating tool, so one click to create an entire river system across a planet, and maybe working on a little bit of lava flow, but we'll have to see when that comes. Next is uh, Mark and Morgan. Thanks, everyone. Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm a tools programmer from the Planet Tech team, and now I'm going to talk about Rasta. What is Rasta? Rasta is our working progress tool for planetary locations, creation and addition. The name stands for a mix uh, of RTS, the game draw, which takes the inspiration from its map editor system, and Star, as well you know. Its goals are to replace our previous placement system based on prefabs to a better object container oriented solution. As our previous system was based on prefabs, any changes to location was source of issue, as it needs to re-enable a whole set of data to have things like missions or shops to work again. With the new system, any change will be easily manageable and won't require us to redo work when a change is made. Plus, as it's now object container oriented, it can be used for outpost, case, or even derelicts, and more. It works as a modular system where locations will in fact be made of small elements that will be placed just like you do in City Builder RTS editor. In a matter of minutes, we now have a new location where we can now create a bunch of cool gameplay. Let's go to Mark, who will tell us about the connector system. Thanks, Morgan. So, I'm Mark. I'm also a tools developer for the Plant Tech team. Do you know what's better than placing everything by hand? Not placing everything by hand. In order to do that, we use what we call connectors. Basically, artists create small parts of homesteads that we can then snap together. Every part is modular, so we can uh, interchange multiple ones in order to have uh, procedural homesteads. 
Every change is very simple. We can change like the whole inside of a homestead or only a building that is a part of the homestead. In that way, it's very easy to make a lot of different buildings. Once something is connected, it is considered a part of the whole. So it moves as one, it can be deleted and changed, and it's basically all for connectors. <laughs> so uh, back to you, Morgan. And last but not least, some of you might have noticed that the UI is not looking quite like an engine UI. And that's normal, as it's based on our in-game UI tech building blocks, and that for a reason. Well, today it's being used by our developers. One day, when it's ready and been roughly tested internally, we'll make a version available to you, the player. And Rasta, it's what? We'll make you a pioneer. Thank you for watching. We are very excited about the tech we've shown you today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Digital Citizen Con. So that was a small sample of what our team is working on. I hope you have enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of CitizenCon and thanks for watching.